The Daily Ticker brought to you by Pelican Brewing. Visit pelicanbrewing.com for more details on locations, events, award-winning beers, independently brewed since 1996. Pelican Brewing, born. Uh, the beach could be a little toasty today. Go grab some pelicans on your way home from work. Uh, mail sack coming up in 13 minutes. Let's talk to our good buddy, Bill Oram. We love chatting with Bill Oram. He's a columnist at the Oregonian. Uh, no, Swag's waving me off. We do not have Bill Oram. Okay, we're waiting on Bill Oram. We'll see if he answers his phone. Will he be in a car with a crying kid? Ooh. Or will he be quietly in an office? I got to I got to admit to a little upset with him, Bill Oram that is. Really? He changed his Twitter picture. Uh-huh. He had a really good Twitter picture. And now it's like a staff photo at the Oregonian. Oh, yeah, the headshots. He went like headshot. Yeah. He had like a cool one where he was like drinking beach, a beer right? on the beach, you know, it was yeah. like a, it was a vibe to it. Well, he's it. a Tillamook guy, so he's right there in the Neat Tarts Oceanside area. I I I'll tell you something. You probably know this. Hmm. I've never changed my Twitter avatar. I do know that. Yeah. It's been Gary Payton Forever. talking S to Michael Jordan for the very existence of my Twitter account. I, I'm not into that because it throws you off. You when you see it the first time, you're like, who the hell is this jackass on my timeline? You're like, oh, it's Bill. I love Bill. You've done that before, and it yeah. threw me off. And you know yeah. who else did that? Dusty. Dusty's changed his photo changes a couple times, and I'm always often. like, what? Yeah. What, what was wrong with the last photo? <laughs> my my uh, Twitter profile picture is from the golf tournament I'm playing in this weekend, drinking out of the trophy. So we'll see if I can add a new one to the collection. It's been a few years since I won. I have a pretty good one with you at Merriweather with a cut-off sleeveless Tennessee, Tennessee shirt. Tennessee Volunteers cut-off And a tea. cigar in your yeah, mouth. Yeah, yeah, that's a great photo of you. Well, now I'm sidetracked, and we need to start here. So joining us now is Bill Orm. We got him. He's on the horn. At Bill Orm on Twitter, columnist for the Oregonian. And I was going to open with a hard-hitting blazer question, Bill, but I need to start <laughs> with... Why'd you change your Twitter picture, dude? I love the old one. I mean, handsome devil, really, is the only answer. <laughs> I mean, I'm uh, not saying you're not handsome, but I think the other one was a vibe, you know? Vibes, it was man. a beach vibe. The other one, I mean, the other one was from my uh, my days still living in L.A. Uh, during the last job, uh, Manhattan Beach, Shellback, and I just felt like I needed something that was more more current. Okay. So, I don't know, but the, I, the, 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 the feedback's been so horrible, I might have to rethink it. Can I entice you in a picture of you eating a block of Tillamook cheese being your <laughs> Twitter picture? Just with, just with like, a, a fork and knife? Just, yeah, just, like, a fork and knife and like a, a block of medium cheddar <laughs> Tillamook. What do we say, Bill? Uh, I'm open to this, but I would probably have to uh, win a bet first. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I'll, let, me, let me throw the poll question to Bill, yeah. and then we'll go from there. So I, I just threw this up, Bill, and I asked – Taking Jody Allen out of the equation, heading into tomorrow night's NBA draft, do you trust the Blazers' front office? Where is Bill Orm at on that? I do. I, I think that um, I think that they have you know a, a good sense of of what needs to happen here. If they have maybe been a little bit conservative in in, in ripping the bandaid off over the last few years, um, you know, you're in a position now where you have where you have draft picks, you have. Uh, attractive players to um, make available across the league. I think the Blazers are in a position now where you, know, you can start to to build. Um, but I also think it's they're kind of in a very obvious position right now. And so now it's just sort of a matter of, of picking the right players and making the right trades. And we haven't necessarily seen them do that, um, you know, kind of throughout the Joe Cronin tenure, um, just because there haven't been – huge dividends for the deals that, that he's made. So I'm a little curious to see how it goes, but I think for the most part, I do trust this front office to to make the right moves kind of through this period. And I think at some point during this interview, we're going to get a Woj bomb and there's the first deal. It's, you know, destined to happen when you start talking about it. I, I, thought, <laughs> I, I thought your article was right. And Dirt's been on this one too of just like, you know, these players are, they're cool guys. They're good. But like, let's see what the young guys are. And you need to be as bad, if not worse next year, because the draft is going to be uh, amazing. Right. Do, do you, I don't know if you dabble. Uh, I, I enjoy the piece, by the way, at OregonLive.com. I, do you dabble in picking favorites in draft stuff? Like if I was to say, Bill Orm, there's rumors they might go ED at seven. Would you counter with, I'd actually rather have Cody Williams or other players. Like, do you dabble in the talent evaluation of these draft picks? Oh, very minimally. I'm the most surface <laughs> level draft evaluator um, imaginable. But, you know, I think, you know, I think that, you know, the Blazers are probably in home run draft pick mode. You know, who is the, you know, who is the best player, highest talent upside that you can possibly get, you know? And, you know, I'm not saying all risk, 
But I really think you want to be looking for reward, especially at a pick like number seven in, in a draft that's really volatile and people don't know. You, you don't have a clue who's going to actually be there. Um, to me, you want – I mean, you are looking for as many core players of whatever this team looks like in five years as possible. And it could be, you know, it could be the, 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 the first guy off the bench, the second guy off the bench, it could be a starter. But you need guys who are actually going to be able to uh, contribute to this team. But, you know, I, I mean, I, I, you know, you hear, you hear about, you know, the upside of Cody Williams. Yes, very, very intriguing. Um, the, the French, the French uh, wing, uh, Saloon, Salon, um, is is also very intriguing. You know, I think that those are the sorts of picks where you have time to wait and see those kinds of players develop. So if Donovan Klingon isn't available at seven, um, you know, which I think he's going to go higher, it sounds like maybe somebody's going to trade up to, to snag him if he doesn't go in the top two, um, then, you know, the Blazers probably get cut off there, which is okay unless they loved him. And if they really, really love him, then they could trade up and get him. But mm-hmm. um you know, for the most part, I think you're just, I, I think you do have time to wait. So I don't think it has to be a ready-made pro like Dalton, you know, neck now. I mean, you can, you can take a guy who's going to take a year, but also, you know, I'm, I'm really interested and you guys might have a better feel for this than I do. You know, the Blazers made the playoffs 11 of 13 years before the, uh, the, the current three-year drought that's going to continue. You know, at one point in our lives, they you know, had made the playoffs 21 straight seasons. Um, I'm really curious. I feel like the fan base is already kind of on, on, on its heels over, over the kind of the losing. And I don't know if just having a clear direction and a young core is enough to get the fan base to re-engage with this team. And so if you draft a guy like uh, TJ saloon right. and, and then you say, okay, and he's going to spend the entire season in the G league <laughs> um, is, is the fan base going to be like, Oh, that's, totally for logical and that's exactly what should happen <laughs> or are they going to be like like you go pitchforks outside of outside of Moda center i i think it's it, it would be if they went that route it would definitely be the latter but i'm, I'm glad you brought that up bill because that was honestly going to be my next question of just how the city handles it and I'm, I'm curious like more from a business standpoint of like how do they survive you know last year they made everybody buy their season tickets before they didn't trade to help Damian Lillard and then traded Damian Lillard so everybody was locked in for last year with their season tickets then you have the whole root sports debacle where it's up to tier and their tv ratings dropped 60 percent and I'm now a guy who has recently canceled cable I I have youtube tv I no longer have root sports so they better figure something out for me as a radio host because I'd like to be able to watch a team and cover them but I don't have the channel, and I, I keep hearing, "Oh, don't worry, they're gonna get, they're gonna take care of it, they're gonna take care of it." It's now June twenty fifth. They haven't taken care of it yet. Of just the business side of how this affects them the next couple of years, because this is a city, to your point, that is proud and prideful, that has had a good winning tradition, that is now gonna go to the depths of the NBA, and I, I don't know if we're built to handle that. I don't know, I don't know what happens, right? Other than. You know, you've got decades and decades of institutional history, and I think that um, fan bases are ultimately resilient. Um, but I don't think that you take that for granted if you're the team. So I do think the Blazers have to give things back and try to figure out how to engage this fan base. And I, I think, you know, what you're talking about with, with, with the TV stuff is absolutely the tip of the spear. And, you know, same as you. I've heard about, you know, them trying to get on um, – on linear TV, I've written about it. That is a, that is a, a primary goal. Um, that said, you still have to get out of the contract with Root Sports, and mm-hmm. you know Root Sports is not, you know, it's is not particularly incentivized to to help the Blazers out here. And so that's something the Blazers have to figure out. Um, I think the timeline's gotten pushed back a little bit, which always makes you kind of go ooh. But um, <laughs> it, I need to stop making. I need to stop making sounds on this show. <laughs> that is going to be a um, phenomenal drop, by the way. That is perfect. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> but um, but for the most but but for the most part, I mean, there's a lot of optimism that that's going to happen. They've talked about it. They've talked about it publicly, and so really at this point, it has to happen. Yeah. You know, once you start saying we're gonna we're gonna get on linear, we're gonna get off route, well, now you need to make it happen. And and so I think that's something that the Blazers absolutely have to deliver to their fans this year. And I think you also, you know, this is. This is basketball operations. It's also business, but you need to sell the vision. You need to have a vision of where this thing is going and how you are getting there. And you've got young players who are exciting. Second half of last season, the Blazers were not, they were not uninteresting to watch. They just had lost 50 games already. And Scoot Henderson had missed 
a ton of games. Shaden Sharp was, you know, off the court. DeAndre Ayton had probably lost some goodwill. You know, I think that by the time they come back next year, you know, I think there's a chance to sort of ride some momentum and interest. If it's on linear television, I think you can get through this period. The, um, you know, and the other thing I would, I would point to is look around the league. Who is winning? It's teams that were built organically um, through the draft, you know, opportunistic in trades, but not, you know, not the super teams, not the teams that sat around with, you know, um, big markets and just waited for stars to choose them. You know, it's not the Lakers. It's not the Clippers. Um, you know, the fact that Minnesota, OKC, uh, Boston, I mean, Boston built through the draft. Um, Dallas, you know, it, 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 I do think that, you know, there, there are enough examples of teams that have kind of done what the Blazers are doing and enduring now, having success at the highest levels of the league, that you can see it paying off if you can just sort of grit your teeth and get, and get through these darker days. Uh, have you put in a request to interview Jody? Uh, I have a, <laughs> I have a, a standing and oft-repeated request to interview Jody. Have you ever gotten a response to that request, or has it just been largely put into the ether unanswered? <laughs> yeah, it, it's interesting. I mean, it, it's never obviously been fulfilled, and you know, for for whatever reason, Jody, you know, ch- wants to maintain a more a more quiet profile. I mean, Paul was also not one who spoke to uh, the media with any regularity. Um, I come from the school of, you know, I want everybody to talk all the time. And I think when there is, um, there are such big foundational questions, you know, the fan base would, you know, the fans, you know, the citizenry (laughs) deserve to know kind of the direction of the team and what is going to happen with, with ownership. And, but I also think that if, you know, you gave Jody Allen truth serum or she stepped up to the, to the podium, you know, the answer would probably be, you know, kind of what you think it is. The team is going to be sold when she can maximize the value uh, of 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 the asset. And um, you know, I I think we're all you know, there's a lot of reason to be hopeful that that would be you know at the end of a at the end of the media rights negotiation um, because there's a lot of stuff that is just is just kind of simmering under the surface. Whether it's renovating you know renovating the Rose Quarter. Um, you know, just the long-term future and direction of the franchise and, and kind of what it represents for the city. You know it's not going to be Jody Allen and the Allen Trust because of the way this whole thing is designed. So at some point you do want to get on getting on. Yeah, I, th- I think that's what makes the whole thing kind of weird for people is most yeah. of us understand that. And so it's like this is the current iteration of the Blazers, but we know there might be a slightly different one in two years. And so it's like <laughs> how much you trust. I, I know Paul didn't do regular media. He's not Mark Cuban, but – he did do a either preseason mm-hmm. or post year evaluation media scrum. We we've only heard Jody's voice once in a shade and draft video. Do you, are you one that believes that like leagues and cities, I guess for that for that matter, should require an owner to have to do some media, whether it's once a year or a couple times a year? Like, are you one that believes that like fundamentally the institutions should be holding these people? Yes, they paid a high premium or they inherited it, but. Also, without us in this city, you don't matter. So, like, are you one that believes it should be mandated? I don't know if it should be mandated, but I think it. I think it should be and is the industry standard. And you know, I you know, I covered you know, as you guys know, I covered the Lakers for a long time, and I got there shortly after Dr. Bus passed away. And similarly, Dr. Bus was you know would have a um, an end of season sort of uh, breakdown where you know that was kind of his once a year. Um, state of the state, you know, opportunity, and you could kind of get everything in at, at those times. Um, you know, I also covered the Utah Jazz, who did not do that. So it, I, I think that there are sort of, um, I think there are sort of reasonable explanations for both practices. But what I would say is, in this situation where you do have an owner who has never spoken, right? That is not that is not normal or standard. You have an owner who has you know has come into this sort of i don't mean this disrespectfully but it's sort of accidentally taken on this this role um you know there's a lot of real questions about about the future in a way that your typical ownership um situation doesn't have um so whether it should be mandated or not i mean i've never thought of it in that way so it's just it's an interesting question but i i I don't really see how you would activate that but 
um, I do think it should be it should be the expectation, and it's just a reason. It's a, I think it's a reasonable expectation of somebody who um, is you know the the steward of a, essentially a public trust like the Portland Trailblazers. Oh, in a way, you yeah. could say Dirt and I kind of interviewed Jeannie Buss because we hung out with Jay Moore for a weekend in <laughs> we Vegas. Did, so we you did, know we've yeah. kind of been there. That did happen one time. At Bill Orm on Twitter, I agree with his take on Jody Allen. I agree with his latest column, and you can go read it at OregonLive.com. Go give him a follow, and thank you, Bill, for another wonderful drop. <laughs> That we can add to that collection. We now have two Bill Orem <laughs> drops. You're the gift that keeps on giving. Thanks as always, and let's chat again soon. Go find what Jay Moore said about at Bill Orem on Twitter, and then we'll uh, reconvene another time. <laughs> yes, yes, I could give you some Jay Moore off yes. the record stories all day. Thanks, Bill. We love you. <laughs> there you go. Bill Orem, who definitely needs to be eating a block of Tillamook cheese in his Twitter picture. That just that needs to happen. Yeah, but you can't have so. a knife and fork. No, I just want to buy. I want you to hold it in your yes. hand. I just taking a big bite out of it. That's what he needs is his Twitter picture. I'm now looking up so. Jay Moore, Bill Orms, to <laughs> see, see if I can see that. Yeah, we could swap those Bill uh, the the Jay uh, Moore stories from the time in Vegas for sure.